Last year, I put out a predictions video for the Australian market for this year and beyond. The most controversial of these predictions was that I think the property is likely to go to record highs. I think I used the term unspeakable highs. In this video, I'm going to go over the four predictions I made and I'm going to go over the last prediction, which was that following the boom, we'll get a cratering of the property market. Over the last few months, I've been contesting this in my mind, which I'll go into later on in the video. The first prediction was that in the short term, not much will happen. As time goes by, it's getting more and more likely that any drop in the property market will not be anything meaningful. This is because the market is soaking up all the additional supply caused by the increased rates and the fixed rate mortgage cliff. I think I also mentioned that property won't drop so much, which probably highlights the persistent negativity in the market. In fact, the average increase of capital city prices year to date has been 3.9% and actually Brisbane has had gains of 7.4, Adelaide 7.8 and Perth 12.5%. Despite this, I still think not much has changed. The mood's the same. People are still worried about inflation. I know it's dropped, but the cost of living is still increasing. People are still worried about electricity. I think they announced the other day there's going to be another 12% increase in the coming year. Rents are obviously still increasing and fuel hasn't come down. The next prediction was that at some point interest rates will start reversing. However, stating that decisions on reducing rates are going to be really conservative. Obviously, we aren't there yet. It'll be hard for the RBA to pull back on interest rates whilst inflation is still above target and we have low unemployment. Let me be more specific here because this really triggers the last two predictions. I think the most likely thing will be some sort of crisis which would crash stock markets and force businesses to lay off staff. In this scenario, I can see central banks reducing rates. If this plays out, then we get my third prediction, which is we get an almighty boom. In this scenario, government would basically green light more spending and in addition announce more schemes like Labor's proposed help to buy or Liberals proposed super for housing scheme, which I've talked about on the channel before. I wasn't really clear on the timeline in the previous video, but I believe my thoughts were it could take another couple of years from now to get to the top of the market. I still think that's the case. However, it really depends on the interest rates part of my prediction. If we grind on in the current state for another 12 months, then it could push it back further. Now, my fourth prediction was that we would get a cratering of the market post boom. Here's the thing. The data suggests housing crashes on a national scale aren't that big here. Looking at this graph, we can see a lot of down periods, but when they are averaged out over the nation, they're actually not that bad. This is because some places are booming whilst others are busting. For example, Melbourne is currently negative whilst in a higher inflation environment, whilst Perth has been smashing it. The fact is property doesn't drop that much. Why? Australians will live off cans of baked beans and spaghetti before they sell up. Demand outstrips supply by a long way. There isn't much overall debt versus the market cap or overall value of real estate. So am I changing my position on the property market cratering? I don't know is the honest answer. To be honest, the cratering prediction was probably more emotion than anything else. Maybe wages inflate against asset prices and it slowly becomes more affordable over a decade or so to buy a property. I just go back to what I've been saying on this channel since the start of 2022, and that is the only thing that's certain is uncertainty. As I'm writing this, the former president of the USA almost got assassinated. The West versus Russia or the Middle East could trigger a global war. The global money system coming to a turning point is potentially on our doorstep as well. The biggest thing I'm concerned about is personal debt. If we get another inflation cycle up, then my prediction increases in probability. I get this is controversial, but there's no reason to say this other than it's my honest thoughts. As a mortgage broker, more debt actually benefits my business. I just don't think it benefits the nation and that's why I'm saying it. If you want to support me and work out how to get rid of your debt faster, you can tee up a chat with me. Otherwise, give the channel a subscribe. As always, comments are appreciated. No Oxygen Thief comments though, please. Cheers.